Our post is David on David's Brain. Welcome back to our ongoing Let's Play of Disco Elysium for the PS4. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe, comment, ring the bell, and contribute to my Patreon. Links in the description at the bottom. All right, last time we, uh, well, we got the tr uh, got the truth for the three raver guys, and we got inside the church, and yeah, got ourselves uh, uh, this uh, I uh, uh, this uh, yeah this key thought here. Uh, what, uh, yeah. Uh, this seems to be the uh, thought that'll finally get Harry to, uh, uh, to you know, like sober up. All right. Yeah. Hey, her innocence, Dolores Day, liked little figurines, right? Liked holding little men between her fingers, remember? Oh yeah, yeah. You have the headless foul rider figurine. You should give it to her. Win her back. What? Win who back? I can't win her back. She's a long dead historical figure. Don't be so pessimistic. Love doesn't die that easily. I should, yeah. This is a task of mine now. So very, very, very nifty. Nifty and mysterious. This is surely what the figurines are for. Let's see. Offer figurines to Dolores Day. Uh, you should offer her any and all you have one day, if you meet her in person. One odd task to give yourself, but here we are. The mother of humanism stands above you. Looks like I can't get the bigger to her. Why? Because she's a stained glass window. That does seem to be a problem. Maybe you meant something else? Like what? Is this hat still on? I don't know. What are we thinking of? Part of your mind has gone on to other things already. The mother of humanism towers above. Why? That does seem to be a problem. Maybe you meant something else? Okay. The mother of humanism towers above. All right, well, anyways, that was a weird. That was weird. A machine stands in the corner, watched over by the figures on the stained glass window. It's turned on and quivering with soft electricity. Another radio computer. And this time it's already turned on. These machines sometimes harbor traps, he thinks. Alarm systems and the like. Let's be careful. We should leave. I doubt this place bears any connection to the case. Yeah, but this machine looks just like the one in the doomed commercial area. It's also quite similar to the one we have down at the station. Must be the same model. The one you saw earlier was the Ream Civic. This is the Ream Prefect. A model number RC7024. Equipped with a Feld mainframe and a Ream compatible interim printer. The Ream Prefect is the governmental version of the commonly used Ream Civic model. Although mostly based on the same technology, the Ream Prefect is equipped with better noise attenuation circuits. Wait, let me just investigate it. You see fluorescent play and print buttons on the keyboard. A hatch connected to the central compartment is wide open. The lieutenant says nothing. You see the machine's glowing frame reflected back from his diamond-shaped glasses. You're free to proceed. Behind the hatch sits a cube-like crisscross of filaments, smoldering in the dark like fireflies. Silver tape on the side says, in black marker, Log, February to March. Another filament memory. Press play to talk with the repeater. The speaker comes to life. Static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. An old lady greets you. Her voice sounds a hundred years old. Good afternoon, Fortress Accident on St. Bruns. This is the East Insel Indian Repeat Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the personal log? It's the same old woman you spoke with through the radio computer in the doomed commercial area. Let's see. Yvonne, it's me again. How are you? Good. Thank you. Please repeat. Is this the personal log? I looked inside the core, but the tape on the film just said log February March. Good. Please repeat the password. Let's look around. There's no use trying to guess the answer. Maybe he knows something. Hmm. Receive. That sounds bad. A login attempt. Something a criminal would do. Fortress accident. 
Is there anything else I can do for you today? Uh, like the one in the Doom commercial area. I have two machines registered to this company name in Martinez. One on Saint Brun, the other on Rue de Saint Guilain. Saint Brun, that's the church. And Rue de Saint Guilain, that's the Doom commercial area. Anything else I can help you with? Thanks, but I'm finished with this call. Goodbye, Fortress Accident. The machine's keyboard is still illuminated. Revealing fluorescent play and print buttons. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure if I press, uh, uh, press the print button, something bad might happen. Hey, Spider-Man, uh, you know anything about... Uh... Oh, hey, Wei, there's coffee in the back. Oh, Wei, I meant the mother's love. Uh-huh. Have you by any chance heard the Vieta say the password or a radio computer? Too many times, Esse. You need it for something. Mm, yes, yeah, so it's for a first degree murder investigation in Martinet. The lieutenant raises his eyebrow, but doesn't say anything. Don't sweat, Evato. The password is afterlife death. What do you think of that? Makes me almost pity La Nilita Pequeña when I hear it. I think we're done here, Esse. That was an interesting conversation. However, I'm still not sure how it's relevant to our investigation. I mean, I don't know either, but it might be, uh, it could be nothing or it could be the most important thing. The machine's keyboard is still, Ill nothing happens. The speaker. Good afternoon, Fortress of Good. Please repeat the password. Afterlife death. Good. I have unlocked the filament. After ending the call, please press print to access the filament. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Goodbye. The machine's keyboard is the printer prints out a long text document with dated paragraphs. It looks a bit like someone's journal. The first entry made on the 4th of February. 51 by an unknown author is short and concise arrived at the church the door was boarded up so i used the crowbar to get inside looks like the place has been deserted nothing out of the ordinary but i'll ask around need to figure out how to get the electricity in the lieutenant leans closer scouring the printout over your shoulder just as you finish reading he looks up muttering under his breath 4th of February. That's over a month ago. Whoever set up those machines has been here for quite a while. Uh, do you think this log might be connected to the case? Our case? No, I don't think so. It must be some local eccentric. Right? 6th of February, 51. Had a little chat with the local fishermen. Said I shouldn't go near that place. That the church was spooky and ridden with narcotics. It's a little spooky, all right. Still haven't figured out the electricity. See? Even one of the spookers themselves says it's unnerving. 7th of February, 51. Finally got the electricity in. Next on the agenda, a new antenna. I'm thinking Esca series? Something advanced. Why would she need an antenna? Why would anyone need any of this equipment here? 8th of February, 51. Bought the antenna. Had some problems setting it up. Called Simo for help. Heard the others are back to making art. Drinking somewhere out of town. Sulislav started a rock band again. Lexi has been seen asking money from strangers. But at least the artists have their act together. They're qualified labor. They can get work anywhere. Graphic design, ads. The programmers are doing fine too. I mean, they're programmers. The writers though, they're fucked. I just have to find out what caused that data loss and be done with it. Still don't understand how it managed to wipe out the backup when the backup wasn't even connected to the front. I know, I know. Everyone thinks it's impossible. They say I must be lying. I'm here to set it right. Data loss? Seems like something to do with radio computers. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about them to understand what the author is saying. Something about the backup data getting destroyed, and how everyone thought it was the author's fault. 
Let's just keep reading. Artists, programmers, Lexi, who are all these people? I think these people worked in the radio computer games business. The one we saw in the Doom commercial area. They must be our former co workers. Mm -hmm. 12th of February, 51. Brought some food from the grocery store. Apparently, there's a strike going on in the harbor. Definitely not happy to see the Martinez people again. Everything's now set up in the church. Going to start working tomorrow, 8 a.m. The strike. We are nearing the date of the murder. Keep reading. I'm interested now. I want to know what's that radio anomaly that sent this person here in the first place. I was right. This might be relevant. 25th of February, 51. I've been sending data up to Lintel for a while now, trying to recreate the data loss, but nothing. Didn't even feel like logging in the disappointment, but I did discover a curious audio spatial anomaly at the back of the church. I've named it the Swallow. It swallows sound. Need to get some mics. Hmm? What is she talking about? 28th of February, 51. Yes, the first recordings confirm that the swallow is real and I'm not just losing my mind. It's a pillar of silence with a diameter of approximately three meters. Seems like the higher I go, the less I record. This might be a coincidence, or it could be connected to the data loss that led me here. The pillar of silence. She is talking about the silence. Is she suggesting it's more than just an architectural quirk? But what could it be? The lieutenant doesn't answer. He follows your gaze, studying the basins. The water shines in them. No ripples. March 51. Some kind of young disco men have appeared next to the church. I've been trying to record the silence to find the epicenter, but now it turns out I've also been capturing the future of dance music, one neo-disco song over and over again. Fortunately, the song is so monotonous, I was able to devise an algorithm to factor it out. The other day, one of the disco men came in. Before I could even say hello, she got scared and left. Good. I don't want anyone distracting me from my work. She must be describing herself. Girl on the ice? Sounds like her, yes. March 51. I got a call from the repeater station. Someone has tried to access the radio computer in our old office in Martinez. Can't do anything about it. The storekeeper still doesn't want to let me inside the building. Thinks I'm part of some kind of curse. How Martinez of her? That's me. I was the one who broke into that radio computer, and the storekeeper must be Plassant. I knew it wasn't a good idea to meddle with the machine. No, no. It was a great idea. You're learning things. This is how you learn things about machines. March 51, a new two-meter aux cable. Noodles, crackers, ping-pong energy drinks, water, toothpaste, gum, also some canned air. What, canned air? by the sound of the church door opening. A strange woman makes straight for the radio computer. Uh-oh. Breaking into my radio computer, I see. I do apologize for the intrusion, madame. We are with the RCM, you see. Uh, we're here on a side case, representing certain music venture organizers. Well, you won't find any music venue organizers here. It's just me and my computer, and it has been this way for weeks. Now please give me some room. I need two seconds to see that you haven't destroyed anything. We should talk to her, after she has rebooted the machine. What is it? Let's see. Uh, I didn't break anything, did I? No, you just printed out my personal lock and wasted some paper. Hey, are you the lead programmer of World Untethered by any chance? Yes. Or, no. Not anymore. That project is dead. She doesn't seem surprised to be recognized. Rather sad. Something passes over her face before she straightens her back. 
Sorry, but who are you? What are you doing here? I am Sona Luukkanen Kilde, the former lead programmer of Fortress Accident and RSA radios. I have over 16 years of programming experience, and I'm proficient in both Vox and Orbis languages. If you're not here to hire me, I don't really know how I can help you. Uh, have you seen the uh, crab man? No. Nope. But you know he's around. Yes. You see? Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, well, it sounds like you're not worried about him at all. No, you're right. I'm not. But why are there so many machines in this place? I brought them here. These are my machines. Please don't touch anything. Uh, why do you need an antenna? I use the AR1 as my RAM prefix processing unit. RAM per uh, perfect. That's your radio computer, right? Mm -hmm. And that antenna is its processing unit? Yes. You really don't know anything about radio computers, do you? Well, I don't really know much about anything in this world, to be honest. All right. Well, all radio computers perform operations up on air. So in order to gain more processing power, you need to invest in a good antenna. And, oh wait, what's on the air? On the front. The unified front of radio waves. Licensed and controlled by Lintel in the East in Cylindic region. It's all around us. That's what on air means. Like love. And the AR-1, is it a good antenna? I guess it is. So far I've been quite satisfied with it. Martinez is an unstable region with bad coverage, and the operation has been surprisingly stable. But it's not the cheapest one on the market. So I wouldn't recommend it for your regular red tape operations. Fraser 1000 is a foolproof line for civilians. Anyway, you should do some research before you decide to buy anything. Ask around, compare the prices. There are many milieus dedicated to that sort of thing. She liked to tell me this. It calmed her nerves. Uh, what are you doing with your radio computer? I'm working. The machine seems almost alien with its pulsing core. The light casts in her face in a strange shadow. Uh, working on what? Could you... Could you just... Shh... For a moment? Or get to the point. I really need to focus on something. It's not just rudeness. It really is hard to concentrate on whatever she needs to do. And you're not helping. Uh, isn't your REM perfect uh, radio computer made exclusively for the government use? So you do know something about computers. You're right. Prefect is used mostly by the government peeps. So why do you have it? Because I needed something good for my investigation and Reims Civic is widely agreed to be below all standards. So I had to upgrade. Besides, owning a Reim Prefect isn't such a big deal anymore. No, actually. It is kind of a big deal. You don't see Reem prefects in every police department, for example. How'd you get your hands on it? I know a friend of a friend who used to freelance for the coalition. I was actually aiming for the military grade Reim Rational series, but couldn't find one. Prefect is mainly based on the same technology as Reim Civic, so it's kind of a ripoff. But it does have better compatibility with newer antenna models, so I won't complain. Uh, what about those bowls of water over there? They are connected to my rain prefect. Whatever you do, just please don't move them, okay? Thanks. Right, I'll try not to touch anything. Next Great. question. What are you doing in an abandoned church? You really like those questions, don't you? Their blood shows. She really hasn't been getting much sleep lately, has she? Well, I am a police officer. It's my job to ask questions. I'm conducting scientific research here. You can't throw me out. All right, what research? I'm looking for the location of a two millimeter hole in the world. Uh, sorry? She's looking for a disruption in the radio waves. That's what her personal log said. Oh, yeah, and that's what the... Oh, yeah, the circle of silence over there, the right. The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. Is the hole connected to the data loss in your journal? Yes, that's what led me here. But I suspect it might be something a bit more complicated than that. A hole in the world. What does it mean exactly? Exactly. What does it mean? Up to now, it has been impossible to say what it is because it's impossible to measure nothing. What do you think it is? What qualities does nothing have? How do you measure something that does not exist? That's a little above your pay grade at the moment. Let's see. Oh, 
Uh, wait, hold on a minute. Does that mean you are now living in a world that has holes in it? Let's see. I can't even understand how we're talking about something that doesn't exist, let alone measure. And let's... Yeah. I don't know. Are we? That's what I'm trying to figure out here. But how do I figure it out? I can't even understand how we're talking about something that doesn't exist, let alone measure it. You measure it by its surroundings. By that which does exist. Which is what I've been trying to do. I've tried using hydro transducers to record the silence. To find out where it begins. But honestly, it's not progressing very well. Let's see. Uh, do you have any idea where this hole might be located? Somewhere underneath those roof beams, I assume. Only a faint crisscross of rafters can be made out from the dark. Most of the tower disappearing into the shade. Why there? There's this place at the back of the church. A place where all audible vibrations seem to decease. I've named it the Swallow. And the higher you go, the less you record. The Pillar of Silence? Are you sure it's not just an architectural quirk? Maybe. But it's oddly close to the physical coordinates of the data loss that led me to this place. This is where the Crab Man lives. I know. You don't think the Crab Man might be somehow responsible here? No, I don't. Uh, you said the research isn't going well. Why not? Because it's just trial and error. Trying to locate the swallow, the exact point in space. And I don't have a... You know what? It would be really helpful if you could just stop talking and let me work. Uh, that's all I wanted to know about the scary 2 millimeter hole in the world. For now. Great. Thanks. Let's see. How do you feel about artonic dance music? What? I hate it. I bet she hasn't even heard it. Have you even... Uh... uh Let's see. Uh, have you even listened to it? Like, actually listened? Yeah. Like, all the time. My tent neighbors don't really ease up with their partying. Do they? Okay, she knows about them, so this could be problematic. Maybe I'd have to be on drugs to get it, but to a sober mind it just sounds like uninspired rock whipping. No idea what it has to do with either dancing or music. Right, right. But how do you feel about a club for artonic dance music? This is about those speed freaks in the tent, isn't it? I've got some news for you. It's not a nightclub they want to build here. Yeah, I already figured that out. Take a guess, why don't you? Let's see. Oh, <laughs> uh, you, uh, uh, you said it would be nice. I can't believe they got you so easily. Go have another talk with those up-and-coming entrepreneurs, will you? Thanks. Good luck. I'm not coming in there. All right, I'll let you work in peace now. Opioid receptor antagonist. Halt. Put down the pipe, scumbag. The knock is on the scene, and he's gonna tell it to you straight. Drugs are for losers. They fry your brain and rewire your circuits to self-destruct. And they make you masturbate too. Have a drink instead. Have two. Have three bottles of wine. It's impossible to masturbate after three bottles of wine. And remember, friends don't let friends get high or be sober. Peace out, little brother. Let's say no positive effects from drugs and no negative effects from alcohol. Alright, well, anyways, this has all been very interesting. Just, oh, wait. Hmm, maybe I could try, uh, 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 try that logic check again.
Yes, what is it? The swallow, you mean? Exactly. What do you think it is? What qualities? Easy. You measure it by the world around it. All right, you measure it by collecting data on its surroundings, on that which exists. Exactly. Very true. That's what I've been aiming for. That's why I have those basins. I've tried using hydro transducers to record the silence, to find out where it begins. But honestly, it's not progressing very well. Hmm. Great. Thanks. All right, well, that happened. Well, yes, that was very, very useful. Thank you. Mm hmm. All right, so the crab man's definitely cool with the church, uh, church being made into a into a dance club, uh, but uh, yeah, the programmer not so much. All right, so we're gonna have to work out a compromise again. Incremental progress! Yeah! Huh? I see you here again. Offside, man. Did I mention getting us into the church would help? Uh, I saw a sticker on the padlock. Could you tell me anything the about sticker? it? sticker? You mean the yellow one? Can you describe it to me? Interesting. He wants you to describe it, though he already knows what it looks like. It's this one. You're familiar with it? Seems like my creation has found its way into the legal bureaucracy. What did you want to ask about it? What makes the sticker so modern? The simplicity was brought to us by classical solarist modernism. That was a tasteful, harmonious simplicity, right? Well, hardcore is not tasteful or outwardly harmonious. It's a warning shot. This will be dangerous. The echo of man's loss. Haunting him. The sticker, the clothes, the music, same thing. Did you come up with this stuff by yourself? Not alone. Many people are thinking the same thing right now. There's a gathering at the Palisium. The beat is the same for all. What's it supposed to be? The dead guy smiling. Uh, what does it mean? But why is the dead guy smiling? The beat history. We are living in the age of history, and in the eyes of history, we are always already dead. How can we ever smile then? Because history is a lie. So are its deaths. The present moment and life are the hardcore. The hardcore expels death. Or maybe he's not dead. Maybe he's just really ecstatic about the beats. Or drugged out of his mind, come to think of it. Uh, he could also be drugged out of his mind. Or drunk. Or in a clinical coma. Or glad to be dead. 
but those versions suck. I think we've exhausted the subject for now. I guess one could write an entire treatise on the thing, but what for? What about now? Are the signs all right now? Nah. Hmm. Still strongly out of sync. Stage gamma disalignment. What? You heard me. Right, whatever. Anyways. Hi again. So, uh, how things going? About the church, I checked it out. And? What happened? I talked to the crab man. Oh, man. Who is he? What did you think? Let's see. Uh, he seemed okay, to be honest. Very spiritual. Really? Huh. Interesting. What's he doing in the church? Let's see. Uh, just preaching and praying for the looks of it. No matter. Is he gonna be a problem? Yeah. Noid is right. Let's get back to the point. What are we gonna do about him? These guys will never catch him. You will never catch him. There's nothing to do. Let's see. Actually, he told me he wouldn't mind the nightclub at all. I don't know, man. Doesn't it feel like a major hindrance to you? A spooky guy climbing around when all the guests are trying to have nice, friendly hyper time? I don't worry. I don't think he really gives a damn about you or anyone else. I guess it's not a massive problem now that I think of it. Honestly, he just he, he honestly thinks he prefers the company. Everyone is welcome to dance till the morning light. Yeah! Maybe. Uh, I guess we'll figure something out. Okay, but what about the other spooker? The one in Grandma's clothes? Did you see her? I was using the mainframe when Suna, the formerly programmer of Fortress Accident, have A appeared. That's odd. What was she like? Did you ask her about the nightclub? She didn't like the Ardonic Dance Club idea. What a pity. That's my favorite thing in the world. And she doesn't like it at all. A shame. What can we do now? Do you see a way out of this jam? And into a laser lit future of dance and unity? Unity! Dance! Uh, she made it very clear that she won't leave until her own project's finished. And you can't just evict her? Let's see. Uh, no, I won't evict her. We have to come up with a different solution. Look at you, honor man. No, Noid. He's right. Maybe we've approached it the wrong way after all. I'm sure there's a workaround. We can make a deal not to bother her. If that's okay with her, we only want to get in the church and spread the joy and ecstasy of music. The lines in the dark exist. Coexist. Harmonious. This crab man seems like an advanced being. He's art. He'll understand. Yeah, he can do his climbing thing in the tower. And the programmer, does she like anodic dance music? Uh, she absolutely does not. Really, truly despises it. Egghead cannot believe what you just said. It makes him pump the jam. A little slower for a moment, but then he returns to the full swing of it. No worries, we'll figure it out. If coexisting fails, you can always muscle her out, right? If it's all okay with you, what do you think? I refuse to throw her out, but I can try convincing her. Excellent. Good luck, my friend. Goodbye, officer. Yeah, no, she's done nothing wrong. I'm not gonna try and go. I'm not gonna go and muscle her. What? Uh, muscle her out. That'd just be dickish. Commit sooner to cooperate with the Ravers or evict her. And yeah, no, I already have, uh, figured out that uh, they were going to be uh, mixing the speed. So yeah, uh, I made sure that they're uh, just going to open up the dance club. That's it. Man, this whole church quest is really taking up a lot of time, isn't it? <laughs> Hello again. All right, once again, time to play the diplomat.
Yes. What is it? Uh, what if you didn't want to leave? Uh, or what if you didn't want to leave? I talked to Andre. He wants to make it work. I don't want to make anything work. Hold on. You don't want to make anything work? Yes, anything. I don't want to make anything work. It's not the anodic dance music that's made her bitter. It's the failure of Fortress Accident. Are you bitter because your uh, radio game project failed? That's right. If we couldn't get our Welkins to happen, I don't want anything to happen. Ever again. There's not a trace of irony in her voice. She means it. Alright, let's see. Research not going well. Discover Fortress Accident and discuss F.A. with the Dice Major. Alright, hold on. A suggestion check, then. Yes. What is it? All right. Easy. When her research is done, she can move out. Yeah, that's obvious. Listen, about your research, you mentioned earlier that it's not going very well. Very well. Maybe I can help with something? What? No, I don't really need any help with the project. But if I could help you finish the project, then you wouldn't have to live in the church next to the Boom Boom anymore. Just think about it. She thinks about it. A glossy look in her eyes. A gust of wind brings more snow in from the broken gallery. It touches her hair. All right. Bring me the game's off-site copy from my old workspace, if you really want to help. It's stored on a filament memory, and I'm unable to go and fetch it myself. I buy your old workplace. Do you mean the studio of Fortress Accident in the Doom commercial area? Yeah, that's the one. You can get in through the bookshop. You just have to do some explaining to the bookstore lady. Uh, let, uh, what, uh, actually, I've already been inside the Doom commercial area. Good. Then you might know the giant ice bear fridge in the building cellar. Uh huh. The filament is inside the fridge. Just go and get it. Uh, and where exactly is the offsite copy? In the giant ice bear fridge. I just told you. It has red glowing eyes. It's impossible to miss. You just need to get the offsite copy from the ice bear. But you've been to the fridge and it wasn't there. There was a note saying. Let's see. I found a note uh, for the ice bear fridge. It said the offsite copy was moved to a safer place. Wait. A note from whom? Did it specify where they took the filament memory? It said the offsite copy had been taken to a nearby ice cream maker. The note was signed by someone named Susla. Zoriza. Of course. Our project lead, Suliswolf Zoriza. God, he was always so hell bent on keeping the copy somewhere safe. That feature creep. And the valley of the heads. Like it would have made a difference. The offside copy was perfectly safe when the data loss happened. That data loss was anomalous. And the heads. <sighs> I won't even get into the heads. Millions of them. Go find that copy from that ice cream maker, will you? Thanks. I found the ice cream maker, but couldn't get it open. It's completely frozen. It's getting ridiculous. Can't you just be frosted? Or, I don't know. I don't know about the ice cream maker. Just figure something out. Uh, why can't you go and get the film and uh, film it yourself? The bookstore lady hates me. Says I'm part of the curse. Whatever that means. Why does she think you're part of the curse? Because she's from Martinez. And people from Martinez have never ever seen a radio computer. She thinks it emits elemental evil. <laughs> yeah, people in Martinez don't really like to get what the times seems to be. She literally started praying for the higher powers when she first saw my rain civic. I'm not making this up. Oh boy. The lieutenant coughs like he's amused. <laughs> Once I came in one morning, only to find that my terminal was full of those strange trinkets and amulets. Wards. It looked like some seminine magic. Uh, well, what is an offsite copy and why do you need it's it? It's a backup of my former employer's project. The radio game we were working on. It's stored on a filament memory, just like the one inside this radio computer. She's making it extra simple for you. 
The backup itself is destroyed now, but I'm hoping to use what's left of it to pinpoint the exact location of the anomaly. You just have to go to my old workspace and get the filament. Hold on. If it's called an off-site copy, then why is it still on site? If it's called an off-site copy, why is it still on site? Oh god, not this again. It is not on site. It is in the basement. Perfectly safe and not connected to the front at all. Basement? Sounds like it's technically still on site. And no. Taking it outside the building wouldn't have protected it from the data loss. There's nothing wrong with keeping the backup in the basement. What happened was a freak accident that has nothing to do with how the backup was stored. We clear? Oh, by the way, we put a dead body in that fridge. Wait, what? Whose dead body? You know, we don't actually have to tell the entire world about the fridge. Whose body is it? Uh, I don't worry, I put it in there temporarily. It's all part of an official police investigation. You put it there? You put a dead body inside the ice bear fridge. Yeah, that's why I said in the first place. Okay. Very cool. Thanks for keeping me in the loop. We would appreciate it if you kept this knowledge to yourself, miss. Who would I tell? My mother? I don't have anyone to tell. And if I did, I wouldn't. I don't care. Alright, I'll go look for the offsite Thanks. copy. And here's my pulse of multi-tool. You might need it to hack loose some ice. It opens everything. If you get me the offside copy, then you can keep the pulse on. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this could be just what we need to uh, pry over that uh, pry over that fridge. Let's see. This is an advanced pry bar, a pry bar plus two, if you will, built by Kovsund and Vasa. A number of gadgets hidden within the frame of the yellow and gray multi-tool will stagger any technician. Help soon, uh, get the ice cream maker open. Uh, find the right tool or ask, for, uh, ask Suno for help. And yeah, speaking of that body, I think it might be high time that uh, we uh, uh, send that thing off. Yeah, it's been it's been in that freezer for a little bit too long. All right, the Montana waterfront. Let me see here. On the cargo container. On the water door, the ice cream maker, and the bar door. And I think I know what war to door uh, it's talking about. No sane person would ever put their head in such a machine. 
whatever. I have no idea what machine they're talking about, but okay. Looks like the remains of the 24-hour repair window shop. It's dark. And the flashlight works a lot better if you hold it in your hand. Fair point. Yes, totally obvious. Right. Now let's get to it. Some areas are inaccessible without your flashlight. the framework in a soft glow. Behind the hatch sits the speaker. Good up. Please repeat. Good. Please. Good. I've unlocked the production shed. Really? She just used the same password? Maybe those radio computer guys aren't that paranoid after all. Fortress accident. Is that? Thank you. Tiles on the cube are still with a quiet determination. The printer starts printing, a piece of paper unfolding like a handheld fan. A black crisscross of letters covers its surface. It's a project report written by the lead producer, Andrew Andy Schott, about Wirral Untethered, a radio game developed by Studio Fortress Accident. The first few pages give an overview of the capital and workforce, while the rest of it seems to be a production schedule. Let's see, read about the, uh... Let's see. Uh, read about the workforce. Who worked there and for how long? The fortress accident employed 18 people. The bulk of the team composed of writers and concept artists. There were also radio programmers, sound engineers, a CEO, two marketing experts, and a single overburdened producer who developed a habit of popping Porolidon in the basement to escape his obligations. But on the other hand, their obligations were piling up at an inhumane rate, a rate that could only be amended by Parolidon. Why did Fortress Accident have so many concept artists? Wait, why did a radio game need so many artists? It didn't. It didn't need so many concept artists? No, definitely not. A few more producers could have come in handy though, especially when dealing with writers, some of whom routinely skip to work because of mental health issues and extremely unprofessional sleep schedules. One of them even managed to steal some valuable company property before skipping town for good. Uh, so, so, uh, so yeah, too many Indians, not enough chiefs. Got it. Right about capital. I want to know about money. In its short time of existence, Fortress Accident SCA managed to burn through truly insane amounts of money. The first tranche of seed financing brought in 150,000 rear, but then came the delays. Eventually, the damage reached 400,000 rear, with only half of the game finished. 400,000 rear? Yo, my yo, these guys knew how to party. Where, oh, God, where the hell did they get all this money anyway? Let's just say it was a real adventure for their Egaunian investor. Oh, okay, so it was an op. Okay, so, um. Oh, uh, basically, it was money. Uh, basically, they were being used for laundering. Skimming through the production schedule, whatever it is. The production schedule depicts the glorious descent into bankruptcy. Because of the concept artists. Not the concept artists. It wasn't even the writers. With their panic attacks and three hour lunches, it was impossible not to fail. The project was too large, and no amount of money could satiate the ever expanding ambitions of the development team. They tried to make a 4 million real game with 400,000 in their bank account. 
They thought they could bridge the gap with pure willpower and imagination. They couldn't. Oh, so it done it by their own ambition then? No. Even then, success remained within an ever narrowing margin of possibility that, despite everything, never entirely disappeared. That is, until they discovered the Valley of the Heads. The what? At the eleventh hour, the lead designer, Jim Spawn, Suliswaf Jalisa, decided that what we're out untethered needed was a secret mystical location at the extreme edge of the map. This place was to be the Valley of the Heads, where the heads of all the headless constructs could be found. The player would have been able to choose a head for their headless party member, and each head would have been voiced on air by a professional actor. Oh, Jesus. Uh, this is a bit saint. Uh, uh, how many heads were there? This is uh, let's see. Uh, no, this is some insane shit. Who were these the people? World had never seen their kind before, and might never again. How many heads were there? So many. The last count, there were approximately ten thousand heads for ten thousand headless men, all of which could be endlessly recombined. How many combinations could you make out of that? Do you really want to know? This seems to be a calculation here, but it may take a while. Yeah, how bad could it be? Oh, Jesus! Yeah, I'm not reading that. Oh! <laughs> oh. oh my god! Well, keep going. And it just keeps going and going and going and going and oh my... Yeah, okay, this... The lieutenant taps his foot impatiently, his arms folded tight against his chest. He's dying for a cigarette. Come to think of it, you are too. No. Oh my, what were they? <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> what the hell? What have I done? What were they thinking? Please stop. What if you broke the radio computer? What if it's never going to stop? Please stop. And that's it. Okay, so that's what did the bin? Well, yeah, that and the catastrophic data loss. This must be the anomaly sooner mentioned in the church log. In the nature of the data loss, there's ominously little information in the production log. It comes at the very end, where things get fuzzy and dark, where tables and numbers seem to vanish into an eerie nothingness, before the Egaunian investors pulled the plug. What is clear is that one day, an unidentified numeric anomaly occurred on the East Insulindian Lintel Front, just as the World Untethered Project was being compiled that day. And the, and the anomaly caused all the data to get lost in the air? When the project was returned, it was completely blank. The team spent weeks on the phone with Lintel, the service provider. But despite their diagnostics, they could never produce a satisfactory explanation or pay for the loss. Wasn't there a, cop uh, wasn't there a copy of the game of Backup? Mysteriously enough, it seems that the off-site copy happened to be on-site when the catastrophic data loss occurred. It was the lead programmer's responsibility to oversee weekly maintenance of the off-site copy and, well, keep it off-site. An explanatory note from the lead programmer has been attached. What's it say? S. Lukanen Kilda, the lead programmer of Fortress Accident. The off-site copy was on-site because there was no off-site anymore. Not for me, not after eight months of crunch. I didn't have a home anymore. So I started keeping it in the basement, in the ice bear refrigerator, near where I went to sleep. It was perfectly safe there. The temperature conditions were optimal. It's not very convincing, is it? My former colleagues would agree with you. Is there anything else from the sleep programmer? The production schedule ends with a few random notes that seem to be added sometime later. Four months later, by an unknown author. I am the only one left, and it's gotten rather damp here. A few other businesses have gone under, too. Slipstream switched to making skis, and the hairdressers just left, cursing Martinez. They're right, though. 
Something's seriously wrong with this place. Martinez, all of it. Still haven't got an answer from Lintel about what happened. All I could get were the physical coordinates of the error on the East Insulindian front on that day. Since the computation happened on air, I reckoned it had to coincide with an actually existing location. I have compared the coordinates to a map of Revachon West. Turns out it's only 800 meters from here. The address is Saint Brune 1147. I am going there to look this thing in the eye. Saint Brune 1147? That's what the street sign next to the church said. Mm. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft. The filament slides out of its glowing nest. This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn, radio freak unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system. You think so? They must have had massive air width. Someone, the leader, whoever decided. A list of names. There's no way. My God. It's exactly nothing. All right. Anyways, enough of all that. Let's head down to that basement and see if we can finally go. Uh, oh, wait. The dice maker is there. Oops. So yeah, sounds like uh, sounds like everything that could have gone wrong with this whole project did go wrong. Yeah, no, it sounds like a perfect episode of What Happened. Hmm. All right, well, first things first, just going to save here, call it a day, and then, yeah, tomorrow, and yeah, next time, all right, before we do anything, let's have Kim finally go and drop off that, uh, drop off the body. All right, so till next time, folks, this is David on David's Brain. See you when I see you. Bye-bye.